Yeah. All right. Uh, Good day, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we are going straight to the point. So today we'll be reviewing um, someone's portfolio. And I'm sure the person is. I have so many people's email. I mean, there's so, so many people's portfolio in my mail, so we can check from from it. And I think some of them are on this in this meeting. So uh, I think I want to wait for about nine or ten minutes more, so that we can have people inside the meeting before we start proper. So uh, please, you might want to start presentation if. <laughs> You are ready. Before um, yeah, let's choose this before. Yeah, because okay. I don't, I don't want to have to like go too far, and then like people are like trying to to drag us back and stuff. Because I mean, uh, deadline plenty for us for yeah. So um, so we could like wait for a couple of minutes and then uh, okay. go from there. Really, so you can like. Give me full access or co host. I, I guess I'd have to like accept people into the group chat too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you broke my expectations of a six month sign up, you actually did good, really. A lot of times I think that uh, critique in its sense does not necessarily mean telling you what could be better. It could just mean telling you that you're on the right path and that um, if you continue this way, you will definitely get better. I think sometimes critic goes that way for me. But if I see you're charging 400,000 or 300,000 for a logo and you're doing shit, yeah, I can properly fuck you up. But if you're not, just, you know, your client, your client likes your work, just continue that way. But if you are designing for high end people, the greater the risk, the greater the reward, really. So if you're putting yourself yeah. in, the, in the path of more risk, definitely you get all the critic coming your way, right? I have my guys, my guys in the tribe who, I directly talk with who that like in the, in my team and I directly train them. Like they know that they can't afford to be mediocre. Like you can't be in my team because be in my team, they're definitely working for my clients, right? You can't be in my team and then be sending me a rainbow colored design. It can't work. So I don't even care whether you're six months into design or you're two years into design. I'm going to bash you. And they, you know, that moment when you've seen the you've gotten a lot of disease and you, you have this like resistance to it, right? They, they really developed that kind of resistance for me. So when I hit them up and say, guys, this is shit, we are starting again, they know that, okay, yeah, we are starting again, technically. Nothing they can do about it. But that's them. But I, I, I can't do it to any other person just anyhow. Why? Because I understand that you have a pro, you have a process. I'm not involved in your life 24-7. And, um, you know, you would you definitely get there eventually. It might take you three more months or six more months. But if, if you just started doing UI UX like three months ago, I'm not going to be bo I'm not going to be bothered about your your spacing or your line height. I'm just going to look at it and see if you can do prototyping or what you did actually look something similar to like a basic, you know, basic screen. If it does that, then you're really good to go. Like no move on from there. Let's go to the next part, right? Because it's like a process. You would start from somewhere, then you move somewhere else. I think one day, one day, one day probably next year because something is going something's going to happen next year probably next year i'm going to show you guys like all of my first year designs and it's going to be like a showcase i'm probably going to frame every single one of it in my house because it's kind of like whenever you see your first designs it reminds you that you're coming from somewhere like most yeah. used to see every big every big design that you see today was once a beginner and i think that's like the goal of critiquing right i think that the goal of critiquing is just to uh, either praise you for being a beginner for what you've for how far you've come and uh, tell you that you're on the right path. But a lot of beginners are trying to be leaders in like first six months of their of their this of their process. Oh, yeah. You can't you, you you can't be like as this is not a, a pride a proud statement, but you can't be like me because you've not had clients who told you that I'm teaching you your job. You've not had clients who tell you that you know see I, I literally two hours ago, right? The client hits me up. I'm, I was, I'm consulting for the for her brand, social media wise, and she hits me up and sends me this bunch of content and says, "Let's post it on social media. Can you like develop some sort of caption for me?" Because uh, I was working on content content strategy for her, and I was like, "You know what? Let's not post."
but someone uh, like she she said I, I don't care you know what uh, she was like i think it's going to work well i was like no i don't think it's going to work well i think it's not easy and stuff and she's like you know what i don't i don't care just send me my caption see there are two options there i could say no you're not sending everything you must take what i, I am doing but see experience will, have, will teach you something it will teach you that see it's your, it's your client's work right yeah but the moment yeah. when your job is actually to control the moment when you you know give them that idea and say see this is what um this is why i think you should do and they reject it and they, they said no we want our way they should is insured it means that when it goes down south or it doesn't perform it's no longer your fault right because you know you mm -hmm. tried your best a lot of times i try to tell my clients I, tried, I told you now i told you and you know it happens that way but if you're a beginner and you're all like don't be like me and stuff and you've not had those kind of experiences you, you really see it's not really about the skill right i have a lot of people who are younger than me in design who can do way better than me in illustration and probably they do better than google maps you can't see but you know every other thing that makes up a designer you know the the empathy the the questions that you ask your clients, the client handling, client relationships, all of those things, right? They are the thing of the, the experience, not just the skills, really. And uh, you can't get those things in six months. It's a journey. It's like, it's, that's why it's called experience, really. You don't learn experience. You you live it. You live through it. So that's like, um, I'm going to start out today's session by saying that enjoy being a beginner. Guys, it's, it's one of the best things you can have. You don't have limitations. You know, the things you've learned doesn't keep you back and stuff. Like, enjoy being a beginner. Don't try saying you want to level up fast. You can't. I mean, when I first met Fourth Canvas, then I was already shouting, I want to be like Victor Fat on me, you know, I want to be as good as Sunji. And I met them when they're like working on a lot of political gigs and stuff. Like, I wanted to be like them. I was seeing their mad ass designs and I was seeing all around in, in, in um, posters. I could see them design mad ass um, layouts. And I was like, I wanted to be like this guy. And I was just like in my second year in design. Uh, but I didn't even get, I didn't, I was, I tried my best actually, I was like, no copying their designs and everything, but go work, go work at all. Mm -hmm. and it was like seven months later, consistently being with them, you know, like, you are saying how they do alignment, how they do margins, seven months, this is not one month or two months, I'm a very fast learner, trust me. Like, I'm a fucking fast learner, but seven months into it, let's, let's start with the fact that they were using Corel Draw and I was using Adobe for starters, but I could remember that whenever they did something on Corel Draw, I would tell them, what did you guys just do? And they would say, like, okay, we aligned and distributed. Then I would go to my system and type how to align and distribute on Adobe Illustrator. And I'll learn that for like the next two weeks and perfect it. And then I'll come back and say, tell them to something else. You know, I learned the principles of design when I started designing, but I didn't truly, truly understand how they could be used to until like I met first time and saw the way they were, you know, combining forms and uh, picking parts and you know six months into working with them i, I actually helped them pass one of their portfolio with a particular client trust me that was the first time they actually had like an actual proper client relationship come and say clients fucking me up please i don't like this the funny thing about these guys is that the, the reason why i feel like they helped my 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 growth and development a lot is that when they gave me the client at first victor was like helping me and saying you know let's combine this together let's combine this together but then i'm, I'm I, I consider myself a prodigy um and so like i already had it controlled or so i thought i wish i didn't actually i mean i just did it today. i was like you know what this should be this thing and Victor was like ah. it's like you know this is very well oh, yeah that take and it left me alone a day later right and the client comes in and says who's working on this and i said me and i could see everybody just you know just carry their face to me. I just left me alone. The Actually, the client was like this you know, top client that they used to have, and they just like dumped him on me. They like face can handle it. So I shall meet him. They're like, uh, they're like, face can handle it and stuff, you know. And I can remember that this client was just shy giving me wahala, which I'm fucking me up. But at the end of the day, sure. When I finished it, like four days later, it was a document, uh, a proposal document for for the government, federal government. When, when I finished it and everything, <laughs> when, when I finished, the, the reason why they why they congratulated me was not that I did a good design. They congratulated me because like I handled the reviews well. They're like, wow, you handled this guy well. We'll try it. Go. We will the wrong for Mount Service. 
And uh, I think right from there, gradually, that's when I could see that guy, you be fucking developed, right? It wasn't really, really about the skills and stuff. Or the day when they would give me a logo and tell me, they gave me a logo on Monday and said, we need it on Wednesday. I didn't touch that logo until Wednesday 9 a.m. Like I forgot that I had a logo to do until Wednesday 9 a.m. Mostly said to me today, said, God will give you creativity. That you do your job of one week, you do it in two days, so you can get two other jobs that same week. I said 9 a.m. I just did the logo and rough, I just rough, rough the, I rough the, uh, the presentation and I, I took it to the office. I got to the office around 1 p.m. and said, this is the presentation. The first thing Victor said was, no. No, we are not using this. And I said, ah, sir, you will use this. So. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, we are not using this. I said, sir, this, you use this, this is the idea behind it. Uh, I showed him my entire idea. And he said this, he said, praise, whenever you do something and you do a presentation, ensure you lay out the complete idea. Don't just assume that the clients, we, we know how to do it. And so I went back and redid the presentation again and then submitted it. Eventually, the client chose the idea. I didn't tell Victor that I did that logo in two hours until a year later, a year later. Because if he knew, well, I'm fucked up in here. But until a year later, I didn't tell him really. But what I noticed from that statement also was that, number one, it means that, wow, praise, you can actually do a logo in two hours. But apart from that, it also showed that um, my ideas about identity design is that you need to put a lot of time into it. But really, it's all about finding the right solution. It gave me an idea of presentation, an idea of solutions. And when I could successfully defend my idea to Victor, it was another point of development for me. I was like, wow, please, now you, could, you can actually present your idea properly. That's a matter thing. So a lot of times, when we, we, get, we are always looking for this huge leap in growth. Like, we want to see us move from A to B. Like, those, like, disappear. Like, we want to enter a toilet in A and come out of the toilet of B. Like it doesn't work that way, right? Like it does, it just don't like disappear from A to B. It's like a gradual growth. But you don't notice it until you've like spent, you kind of like consistently spend time growing. And then one day you try to look back at your progress and you're like, wow, come far. So while, while I'm ending, while I'm ending this with really, stop entering people's DMs. Really. I'm just starting. I'm not my DM quite fine, right? We don't enter with I'm just starting here at US, come and teach me. I won't, I can't. No, I won't. I love teaching. Teaching is therapy for me, but I can't. I can't because currently right now I don't even I don't know where my life is going to right now. See, my life is full of like deadlines here, deadlines here, deadlines here. I cannot become a I cannot come and be and be teacher, you know, do alignment. Imagine I'm dealing with somebody who is paying me like 300 k and you're expecting me to bother you with alignment. Like who all wrong now? What do you think about it? So, like, the main idea now is, like, you know, put you guys on the right track. I can tell you that, okay, go to YouTube, go to YouTube about these things. Go to YouTube, find somebody in your, you know, in your own circle that you can grow with. But don't, see, everybody has, everybody has, I didn't go to Victor and say, Victor, come and teach me design. I never did that, actually. Like, he just, I just stayed with him. I they know me. I stalked them for an entire year. They didn't pay me a single cash throughout entire year of the first canvas. I was like an unofficial intern. I was contributing consistently to the, to the company as much as I could. I was leaving school, then I was in 300 level. I was constantly leaving school. I remember I had six, four carryovers that year, right? That was because I wanted to learn something. I'm not saying you, should, you need to have carryover, by the way, but that was because I wanted to learn something, right? Like I knew what I wanted and I went for it, but I didn't like disturb somebody and say, you know, you have to teach me this thing. You have to teach me this thing. Yeah, I finished one for that. You have to teach me this stuff. No, I didn't have to do that, right? Like I was just with them. I was studying them and I was like shadowing them and stuff. And then sort of like peace from there really. And um, you know, it's 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 uh it's it's refreshing because I I will tell my guys that see you're in charge of your own growth, you're responsible for your growth. No one is, no one would ever be, whether you have mentors or you have mentees, they don't your mentors can only guide you, but they won't take the step for you. That's everything is up to you, really. You can find mentors, you can find friends, amazing for you, but you, you don't need them to grow, really. If you have them, you are, you are good to go, but you don't really need them. Your growth is totally in your hands. I, I found Chris Doe on my own, trust me. And uh, Chris Doe was like that, that far mentor, and I've been watching Chris Doe since forever. It took me just like two years to I was actually able to think like Chris Doe. Like, I'll be talking to clients, and I'll be like, you know, uh, tell me about your problem. Um, you know what, I, um, 
I can work with this price, but I don't think this price works for me. I'm trying to get value from you. And I'm like saying this do word for word. And I'm like, what the actual fuck? I didn't notice. I mean, I've been watching Chris for like two years. I was binging that guy. I knew him right from the days when he was leading blind, all his projects, how far he has come. I knew his kids. I knew his wife. I knew how he started the future. Trust me, I was a Christo fanatic. If Christo was Jesus Christ, I was Peter, not John the Beloved, basically. That's how crazy it was for me, right? My growth was not one way, right? And so I don't think it has to be one way for you guys. I didn't start product design until this year. The best self product design was absolutely mind blowing. I self product design is an actual project, actually. The guy just called me and said, Hey, do you do your yes? I said, Yes, I do. And he just gave it to me, and I was like, Okay. How do we do this shit? And then uh, around that time, Mudia was like my friend. And then I was like, hey, Mudia, what's up, my father? Let's do this thing together. And then he, you know, he, he, took, he took me around it. And then one day, Mudia was going to have a project. I was like, guy, Afa, I'm coming on this project. You're paying me 10% or 20%. He said, okay, like, you know, voila. And I got on the project and we worked on the project for like months. And then we finished the project. We got on, on another one. But now I'm tired of product design. It's a boring, it's a boring piece of shit, actually. But you guys get the idea, really. Like you know, growth growth is 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 not is not linear, right? It's not that you have to do this one thing to grow. You have, you have to do this one thing to grow. You just need to know that this is where you want to get to, and you just need to trust your journey, not trust your process to get there. And when we get there, you can just you know what, just like flex all you want, really, right? But you guys don't expect to you know jump from A to to Z just like that. You need to go through B, C, D, E, F, G all the way onto Z. And that's what I would say about, about growing. So guys, when you come to people's DMs, like I said in one of my sessions, don't come in asking people to be your mentors. Ask questions, like know why you're hitting them up. You're hitting Moski up, they're in Alpha, Moski. I, I, I want to get a client, uh, but there's a specific right person I'm looking at. How do I reach out to him? Moski will answer you because he knows there's an answer here. But when you say, hey, Moski, I don't get clients. I am broke, I have no clients, be my mentor. He doesn't know what he wants to do to you. Like, where should he start from? Like, should you be a better designer? Should you be a better sales guy? He doesn't know. But when you tell him you have a client, you are targeting, or you want to make a particular amount of money in a month, and you need somebody to, yeah, he can answer those questions, right? You guys would see me actually say screenshots and say, see guys who say that they, they increase their prices in, in like three months or something. And he's like, okay, that price is not answering me. These guys came to my DMs with questions. They're like, how far I want to do this thing? And I'm like, okay, you know, you know what? Okay, do this, do this. This is what I did. I mean, this is what I did, so you can do this too. And they're like, okay, cool. And then you know, two months later, they're coming back to me. No, I didn't, I didn't say tomorrow, it said two months, two months or two weeks later, or four weeks later, they came back and said, How far I increased my prices to this, how far I got this client to do this, how far I left this place and I got a better job. Like it works that way, right? They are seeing growth because they know what they are looking for. But you don't randomly come to someone's DM and say you're looking for a mentor. It's what everybody says. So if you want to really stand out, right? If you want to really, really stand out, ask questions, go straight to the point. The best relationships this in this in this year came from questions, direct questions. <laughs> wow. Like I sign into the DM and I ask you a straight up question. Alpha, this is what I want. Alpha, are you there? Alpha this, alpha that. Bam. Straight. They will answer me. If it's move from there, good. If you won't. Stop there and we we'll move on. It's that simple, really, right? I, I hope you guys uh, take that. So we are 64. Let's get into this. Um, so today we'll be talking about positioning yourself for the right client. Um, I, I don't know how to even start this, really. But I'm going to start. It, I'm going to start by saying that um, Moski had this particular session a couple of weeks ago uh, about um, I can't remember the name of the session. So the paid session. That session you had. Um, I can't remember the name anymore. But I know I held a session just after it. Does it I can't remember what that session is. I think your session was around design preneurship, yeah. Um, introduction to design preneurship. Where mostly was like talking about, you know, the entrepreneurship side of design and how to fix design. It was basically talking about how to sell and market yourself as a designer. And uh, just like a few days after that, I think two days, I held another session on um, branding for designers, where I talked about how designers can brand themselves. And I remember that there was a slide in that session, I sort of explained it and said, most key deals with the short term and the medium term, you know, getting that money in your account right now, getting clients to see you like right now within the next two, three weeks. I mean, all I'm all about, what, what I was talking about then was 
how to, apart from just selling and marketing, how to build your brand and your perception over a long period of time so that those sales and marketing can keep on coming, right? And so if you like, if you like, I'll tell them mostly session, I'll tell them my session, you probably don't even need to be on this call. Like, you don't need to, you already like, you hit gold. But if you didn't, or you're just like selfish and you wanted more, let's kick off, right? So positioning yourself for right clients, I'm not going to teach you how to sell today. No, I'm never am going to teach you how to market. Go back and pay Musky 3,000 euro. And by the way, Musky, remember that pays you, give me my share, like 10% or something. <laughs> Anyways, um, so uh, positioning yourself for, for, for actual client. Guys, first, the, if you're not, you not following me on Twitter, don't uh, because I don't have sense and uh, don't expect to be seeing signed tweets every day. It's not that way. When, when club football resumes, I'll start abusing us now again. <laughs> but until then, um, what we really, really want to talk about today is not how to find clients. Uh, what we really want to discuss today is um, how to make yourself findable. So a lot of times we keep on shouting, I can't find clients, I can't find clients. The real, the big goal, the gold, right, in the market is you shouldn't be the one finding. You should be the one looking for you. That's like the big, the big shit inside it. You shouldn't be the one finding. So I to say, there's this thing I learned four years ago. It's called zero law. Zero law says that when something is empty, the universe will find everything possible to fill it irrespective of whether it is the perfect fit or not. So when you have like a square hole, the universe is going to work its best to put in something into that square hole, right? It doesn't care whether it is, it is a square or it is a rectangle or it's a triangle or it's a circle. Like it's just going to try and fit it, right? Because the world isn't fair. We all know that. But it is balanced as fuck. So you know those guys where they say this life is no balance. Now life, the life is fucking balanced, right? That's why we have the law of karma. We keep saying things like people get away with bad things. They don't. Nobody gets away with bad things. It's just that their problems are not our problems. The, the kind of problems we want for them, they don't have it. They can't have it, right? But they have their own problems in their own way. So the world is balanced, really. You know, somewhere is burning, somewhere is growing. And if someone is dying, somebody is being given birth to. Um, it's always balanced, constantly balanced. That's the idea of the universe, right? The universe has so many laws come. Um, so many laws controlling it. Whatever goes up, you come down. And you know, many laws, it has to be balanced. And that's the idea. And the same universe also has somebody every second, every day, looking for somebody to do something for him. And that's the idea of a market, right? Everything is a market. Every day is a market, right? There's always somebody looking for someone to do something for him. Ideally, as a designer, you shouldn't be the one looking. It should be the, they should be the one looking for you. Why? Because they are the ones in the position of need, and you are the ones in the, they are the one in the position of solution. So it's just like really weird when a doctor is looking for somebody to treat. <laughs> like, you know what, I'm doing for sick people. Please, sick people come to my place. You have to be sick. You must fall sick. You don't have a dick. What's the problem? Hit your head on the wall. Let me give you paracetamol. No, you don't see doctors doing that, right? And so I see no reason why designers are looking. You don't, I don't know why you're looking for somebody to have a logo. It's kind of really weird for me, really. You know, like you come, and that's one of the reasons I don't say proposals is bad, but that's why one of the things why I have a big bias against public redesigns. Like you just come online and like, okay, you must change your logo. Like, why? Why? But the problem is if the client doesn't know they have problems, they don't truly see their problems, whatever solutions you create for them is shit. They won't pay for it. If they will pay for it, they won't pay well enough for it. And even if they pay well enough for it, you won't enjoy doing it for them. Why? Because they will constantly try to insert their bias into it. So first thing first, you need to uh, remember that you have the solution, right? Remind yourself that you have the solution. The solution is someone's problem. When you figure that out, there's a kind of, there's a level of pride you would kind of develop. And that pride is what you need, right? You are the gold, you are the diamond, you are the treasure, and you are what people are looking for. So uh, when, I, when I was, this quote is not referring to you, this quote is referring to uh, your clients. Um, positioning is making yourself clearly available to those who need you. Uh, that's the idea of positioning. It's making yourself clearly available to those who need you. It's not just making yourself available. 
it needs to be clear. That's like the most important part of positioning. It needs to be clear. People shouldn't just know that you know how to do design. They should have a complete informed opinion about you. And that's the idea of portfolios, really. I mean, the exact idea what we are having in the entire session, you know, big portfolios. Portfolios give people an informed opinion about you and what you do and why they should hire you. And so if your portfolio does not give a complete information, a complete structured information about you, then you are doing shit. And that's like what we're trying to do here. We're trying to ensure that you have a portfolio that can actually help you to do that. So positioning is making yourself clearly available to those who need you. Uh, so your job is to make yourself available. Your job is not to find clients. I hope you guys get that. Your job is to make yourself available, not to go around looking for clients, right? You make clients come to you. Think about prostitution. Prostitutes don't go looking for clients. Clients look for prostitutes. What do prostitutes do? They stay where clients can find them. They stay in front of hotels. They stay in front of junctions. You know those popular junctions where the big men come in. In our career here, in those state here, there are certain junctions where to the rich men's places, you need to pass those junctions, right? So they set up their, you know, their shop in those junctions. There are two different kinds of clients for prostitutes. They are the Okada men, you know, the low and dead men that go to, you know, they go to those short, short hotels that are not for sleeping, they're just for, you know, doing their stuff and they're moving out. You know, they don't stay in front of it. We have spaces, like you see them, house, 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 like six houses. It's all, of, all of them are like, their shops for prostitutes, right? And they stay in front of them. But now, the thing about it, right, is that these prostitutes don't just stay there. They also give you something that attracts you, right? So they, you don't see any brothel without a, a, a bar in front of it. So every brothel has a bar. Why? Because their clients need to drink first, usually drink first before they uh, do. <laughs> when they do their shit, right? They, they, they usually drink, they usually drink first, right? And not, they don't, their clients, this set of clients don't drink babies. They don't drink, you know, they don't drink babies. They don't drink magic moments. They don't drink coffee rum. No, they don't do that. They drink, you know, alumo, origin. I know what you see there. You don't go to those bars and start asking for magic moments or cocktail. So send you away. So that's like, that's the first ones. And uh, in Accra, they call them Ashebu. That, that's one. And they say, and that's set. They call them Olo Show. Now, these ones, um, actually, they don't stay in front of the shops. These ones, they go to junctions, you know, they go to front of hotels, they go to, you know, those places where the big men in cars drive by. If you, if you have a bike, you need to go and pick them. They first look at you up and down. Like, who is this? It's a wild and you know. You know, they stay in front of shop right. That's where they stay, right? And they don't stay and start saying meet me meet me meet me mm -mm. they stay and if you are passing by they you see that they stand out properly from any normal girl who is walking by so you don't you don't see them within normal girls and say this is a normal girl you, you know that this person is here for business this is what she does right and then you can actually single them out so they are not only available they are clearly available such that even if you are blind you'll find them and so your job is to be a prostitute and not to be a, what's the word? What's the word? What would you call, not to be a nymphomaniac, yeah. Don't be finding sex, let sex find you, you know, and then you get paid for it, basically. So be a prostitute, um, that sounds really weird when I say it. But like, seriously, that's like the idea really, like, you know, <laughs> be a prostitute, be like prostitutes, learn from them really. So, People should just know you. They should have like a really complete informed opinion about you. They should see you and know that this is like who you are. This is what you do. Gone, 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 gone. They shouldn't assume. They should know because if they don't know, you're in trouble. Like I used to say, right? Remember, I said that there are two kinds of prostitutes: Odosha and Ashero. Right? Ashero are, you know, brutal, you know, Okada people, small, small people. You know that you know you need to like meet them here and uh, they'll take you to their brutal. And these guys, they have. If I keep talking, I think I quite nice. This is this is problem. But then I've done user research. So, <laughs> so now I, I I know all of this from from my from my bike man. So my bike man would tell me that when you when you go there, it's five hundred naira. The, the guys know the price. It's not you don't. Oh, can you know? Accra is cheap by the way. Oh, can you know? You can't know. You can't you can't price it right. It's straightforward. That's one thing in position. When you position your story, nobody, nobody will talk about your pricing. 
you know they can't give, but a lot of people are already paying that amount of money. So they can't come and start saying, no, this is my money. Yeah, they will tell you, no, it Now, when you position yourself well, positioning puts you in charge of the entire sell, sales um, process, right? You control everything when you put your left, you control that space, right? It's like I said, you're marking territory. So when you come inside, they have guidelines. Number one, you need to bring your condom. No matter what, no matter how much money you have with you, you cannot fuck raw. That's the first thing, right? Now, the second one is that um, you you need to pay before you, you know, enter the rooms, right? And number three, you sometimes you can get to pay, sometimes you don't get to pay, whatever that is, right? But the point is, the only thing you can do there is get what you want, right? But you can't control how you get it. So the thing about positioning is that you control the narrative, you control what you want them to see, how you want them to interact with you and whatnot. So when you get clients that disturb you a lot, like you have 15 clients and 14 of them have dropped your life, then it means that you are not properly positioned, right? It means you're not controlling the narrative, you're not controlling the kind of clients that come to you. Do you understand the idea? So like I say here, you can't sell to everybody, one, you can't sell to anybody, you either sell to somebody or you don't. So if you don't choose your clients, the market will choose it for you. Do you guys hear it? If you don't choose your client, the market will choose it for you. And when the market chooses for you, remember I said the world is balanced, but it's not fair. So when the market chooses for you, they'll give you anything anyhow. Guy, it's going to really, really be fucked up for you. And that is the idea of positioning. You want to control who comes to you, right? So you can't sell to everybody. Okay, you can't sell to seven billion. That can you sell to anybody? The idea of selling to anybody is a fox idea. When you think you're selling to anybody, what you're actually doing is you're selling to nobody. Market is just assigning them to you. Why? Because I said that the universe tries to fill any hole. If, if you guys have noticed, when you try to increase your prices and you're like really, really broke and you have no money, you'll notice that clients that come your way are clients that actually pay less than what you need to collect, right? Why is that? The universe sees that your account is broke. They're just bringing in those, whether it is 1K, 5K, 500 Naira. You shall want that your account to be balanced. You know you have a skill, but you're not having something to balance the skill. So the universe is pushing them your way. So it's not your job to ensure that, ah, universe, so this is not what I want, so this is what I want, so this is where I want to give me stuff, right? So the idea of, the way you can see positioning also is that you are informing the universe that this is what I want, so just give me this, what, just give me what I want, right? Don't give me something else. So. You need to sell to somebody. And when you're choosing somebody to sell to, what you're simply doing is that you're defining how they should look. When you begin to choose, when you begin to position, when you begin to choose somebody, your head, your what you're telling the union, what you're telling the market is that I want to sell to this set of people, every other person, fuck off. Let's remember our, our favorite guy, Malians come together, every other person, what? Fuck off. So in this case, let's be prostitutes, let's be like Naramali, let's be like, not be a Malian, let's be like Naramali. Understand who are your fans, understand who are your clients, understand who you want to talk to, and every other person should fuck off, right? So if you don't sell, if you don't sell to somebody, the market will give you a client. And again, the market is not fair. I can say this proudly from experience, the market is not fair. It will play you go go and to fuck you up, right? It will fuck you the hell up. I've never seen anybody who didn't have a consistent client who said, okay, anybody comes and anybody goes and enjoy this way. Nobody ever. The market consistently fucks them up. So that being said, positioning is not instant. I already cleared this off earlier. Nothing is instant, really. You decide to move to Canada and you're not there yet. You can't walk into a toilet and come out in Canada. No, it doesn't work that way. No, no. So position is not instant. When you move from one place to another, it's called a journey. So it's simply saying that you want to properly position yourself. I mean, there are 75 people here. When you want to properly position yourself, you need to understand that you're going to move. You know, when you move from across to Lagos, you move through states. You're going to move, you're going to be inside hold up. You're going to have police checkpoints. You're going to have bombs. You need to understand those things because if you don't understand them, you think you're either doing the wrong thing or you're doing nothing at all, right? Everything that, whatever Moski is today, right? He didn't appear there, bam. You, you, you guys have seen his story. He was so excited as a graphic designer, publishing guy, very long thing, and now he's going to be a farmer very soon. But, he, you know, he goes through that particular journey. He wasn't, he wasn't a troublemaker on Twitter 
one day. It didn't start one day. He built it over time. He built his record, his record over time. And then he said, this is my brand, this is what I am. I position myself to be this kind of person, right? That's his journey. And for me, it's quite different. It's not like most on the other hand. I didn't do the things when I became a designer. Right from the beginning, I've, I have always been a designer. I've been designing since I was nine, technically. Right? I've been doing career since I was like nine years old. And like it's been building that way consistently. You know, my choices, everything that I've been in, my clients, you know, running the company, leaving the company, running the entire team, being the youngest person in the team, managing people who are close to 10 years older than me. That's my journey, right? And it's different for every other person. But at the end of the day, right, when we get to a particular place and we look back, we see that we've moved from place to place, right? And then usually the, the reward for, for positioning is usually money. Money is not a goal, like I tell people. Money is not a goal, money is a reward. It's a reward for achieving your goal. So Muski is making seven million, I mean, seven million figures in my life. Muski is making seven figures, right? Or so eight figures now, yeah, eight figures. Muski made eight figures. Sorry, I'm sorry for, for making a mistake, my Lord. May I, may I, my Lord. Muski is making eight figures currently, right? He didn't get to eight figures by itself, but when he got to eight figures, getting to eight figures was not a goal. His goal might probably be to have a client that would afford him, to have clients that can pay him this amount of money. Those are goals, right? Then when he gets them, the reward for hitting that goal eight figures. We get the idea. So money in itself is not a goal because we're going to get to a slide where you have to set your goals. The people that are mentioning 10 million in five years, those are not goals really because money is fickle. It flies by. If you've never run a company before, you never understand how small money is. Like you will make millions in a year, but your end of the year balance is like 10,000 naira. Like let's let money go. Something like that. So our position is not instant. It's like the journey and you need to understand that journeys have you know their calls, their turns, their roundabouts, their hold ups, their police checkpoints. You have to wait for somebody to join your journey. You need to pick up people, you need to drop people, uh, you need to you know pack at the place, you need to ease yourself, you need to take shit if you are fucked up that much. You need to eat on the road. There are a lot of things you need to do on a journey and you need to respect that. Because if you don't, you will think that you are the one, you know, you're you doing the wrong thing or you're going the wrong way. And sometimes, you know, I've never been on the journey and you don't know that you're going the right place, like left bush, right bush, front bush, back bush, right? Sometimes you can be that confused on your journey. But the point is, you need to trust the process. The way I see it, market Boris would say, trust the process, you never know where to take you to. But the point is, you get to destination eventually, as in if you are really, really sure. Because if you keep on going on a straight path, you will definitely get to a point of civilization. But you can ask, please, I'm on the right road. Yes, you are on, continue. If you are not, where can I go to? Then you turn back and you go. Again, it's your journey, right? You need to trust it. Nobody controls your journey for you. It's yours. Remember I said again, you're in charge of your process. If you fuck up your process, nobody is going to stand in front of God and say, it's my fault. Or nobody's blood is on. Nobody, your blood is on nobody's hands. Now you get your blood, right? So your goal in positioning, when people talk about brand positioning and strategy, um, they say things like, uh, when you position yourself, you take care of his space, so the clients always think of you. No, they don't. No client you always think of you at every point. Who are you? Are you their wife? Nobody will think of you every point in time. Like, why would they do that? <laughs> right? They have like a million, a million things to think of, and it's not you and your graphic design they'll be thinking of that you can use Photoshop. Of course not. They can't think of you, right? Just like you don't think of Coca-Cola all the time, or you don't even, in fact, your closest person, your girlfriend or your, or your mother or your wife or your boyfriend, you don't even think of them all the time. It's not some far guy that's collecting money from you, you don't think of. Of course not, you can't. Your goal is not to occupy a space. Your goal is to simply be an option when they begin to think of something that you do. So it means that positioning means, or good positioning means that if you're a graphic designer and somebody is thinking of making a flyer, you are in your mind, you are popping out. A good positioning is like when you want to buy Coke, right? Uh, you want to buy a drink, you're thirsty. You're thinking of water, Coke, and uh, say, you know, smooth. That's positioning, right? But before that thirst, you're not thinking of Coca-Cola at all. You're not thinking of water at all. You're probably thinking of, you know, going to, you know, going to a hotel or, you know, having that meeting or buying this thing. You don't think of boat and Uber every time. But the moment you want to order a ride, you're thinking, which should I order, boat or Uber, right? That is positioning, you know, like popping up when they need you. They don't need you, you don't need to pop up. And that is, that's the thing about advertising. Advertising really is just simply like, you know, putting yourself out there 
So at the moment somebody begins to think of what you do, you would pop up. So advertising does not help with sales. Advertising helps with positioning, and positioning helps with sales. Do you guys get the idea, the, the, the long thread of, of, what, of what these things do, really? So your job, your goal with positioning is to be a leading option when people begin to think of it, when they begin to think. And when people think about positioning, they say things like positioning is for clients, positioning is not for clients, positioning is for everybody in goals, designers, and to make your space and clients, right? Because a lot of people that are clients, we can I have 50% of my income this year came from fellow designers, right? It means that they worked on a project and needed me to partner with them, and I popped up up as their favorite logo designer, or their favorite brand identity designer, or their favorite strategist, their favorite user interface designer. So you need to position yourself in the best way possible. You need to position yourself in the, in the best way possible. So the idea of a good position is, is to, you know, um, be an option, like to constantly be an option and what people think of you, right? So, how do you position it? I, I have like divided, I've divided position into three phases. Um, it's one phase, two and phase three. And um, at this point, this is where I'm like, I'm, I'm praying to God that you can have like sheets of paper or you know, have something to write on because the remaining part of this place is where you, you begin to answer questions. So phase one, training and tactics. I could but so I'm going to use support to this phase. Training and tactics, just before a match, right? You have training and tactics. Here, at, in this phase, what you will be busy doing is you will be, uh, you know, planning and preparing yourself for positioning. You're not positioning yet, you're preparing yourself for positioning. And again, remember the journey. So, I mean, phase one takes one about three of the entire journey, which you get. So you need to prepare yourself. Once you start preparing, you be on your journey. You don't just wake up one day and say, I'm a designer that charges one million. Who the fuck are you? Like, how did you just jump there? What have you done to make me believe in one million? You've not done 100K, you've not done 200K. You just wake up one day and say, I'm doing one million. Who are you, right? And um, that's like one of the reasons why you a random youth cannot just wake up one day and become the president. But I will ask you, who are you? What have you done? What have you done in your life that you're not going to become president of Nigeria, right? And that's the reason why these guys will continue to be president. Worry, article. They have done stuff. They've stolen money. They, they have a record in politics. And that's why people will continue to trust them, right? And even if something as bad as that, something as bad as that can be so well positioned. Imagine something as good as you. Why would you be positioned? Why would you allow things to just like, you know, leave it to you and stuff? So first thing is training and tactics. Um, and so I'm going to be using our favorite guy, our favorite person, the, 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 the most popular person in Nigeria right now. I'm going to use the person as an, as an example. And this is a retired general, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, despite what you might think about him, he's an amazing example of branding. Uh, going, to, going, going to his change, his, apart from the fact that he, he won 2015 solely on branding, apart from that fact, that major fact, is the fact that the way he has managed his government without actually getting ousted. And the way he has maxed dictatorship with, uh, with democracy is something of, is an award-winning move. I mean, he should win a branding award, basically, because people in the department, they know branding. And so it's going to be an example for this, you know, this entire stuff, right? From zero, from phase one to phase three, Madhubaru will be a major example. All right, so, so they said nine minutes more. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Boss, you give me 20 minutes. Or... All right. So first thing is, uh, what do you want out of this, right? In, in in your first phase, what do you want out of this? What's your end game? What's your goal? Um, you want. To, remember, I said your goal is not money. You don't want. That's not your goal. Your those are rewards to when you hit your goals. Really. Um, I've seen a lot of people who say they wanted to make two million naira, and uh, they started feeling bad. That two million naira. And what they hit was, they, they hit 1 million. And um, when you look at their growth process or what they have done to hit 1 million, it's, it's way, way, way valuable than actually hitting 2 million, right? So you want to really look at what's your goal like? Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to work in? What do you want to do? Do you want to run a business? Do you want to be a freelancer? 
do you want to be uh you do you want to work with pay staff you know do you want to uh run an ad do you want to um work with a business that will reach out to two thousand people those are objectives why because when you see them you know them you can like you know you can hold them sometimes when we use money at objectives what we are thinking in our head is that we want two million era in our account and we can see two million but the problem is Kind of, I have made two million, but you won't see two million in your account. So, like, you, you could have hit that goal, but you won't see it, and you feel bad about it. And seriously, that's more depressing than you can think, right? Making so much money and not seeing at the end of the month. Like, I, I, I had this particular month when I made like a, a 1.5 million, and my account at the end of the month was reading 2,992 naira.44. In my head, I'm like, what? Like, how? How? Yeah, where the fuck was this money, right? So money really can be it's, it's fleeting because now I would see two thousand in my account and I won't believe I've made one, one million if I didn't check my account statement, right? Um, I mean you can you can also see most most kids cash flow. Yeah, I think he posted it that day where he posted his cash flow. He had made like eight figures this year, but see his ending balance. You're like, hmm, see God. <laughs> so you don't want to use money. You don't want to use a figure, right? As 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 your main goal. You see. It wouldn't, it wouldn't really help you. So I would say do something of value, something you can measure, something you can always point back to, right? Uh, because that is what success will look like, really. You have no idea how much you can, you know, success will always be consistent, really. Like eight figures return to nine figures, nine figures return to 10 figures consistently. When you hit a particular level of success, right? Success continuously compounds. The success of last year, Will still be the same, will still be, will still have the same value as it did last year, this year. So if I said I made uh, 10 million for a particular startup in two days, or if I particular NGO in two days, when I say it two years later, to still hold the same amount of value as it did two years ago, that's what you want to look at, right? That's an objective, right? But when you said, when you say two years later that you made 10 million Naira two years ago, after Naira has devalued, so far down by like 50 percent nobody will give a fuck you like, what the fuck is 10 million just like when your when your dad tells you that i use 500 naira to go to school you don't see the sense in using 500 naira to go to school anymore like to them it's big money but to you it's no longer money really so if something is fleeting you don't want to use that as as, as a metric of success so you want to really figure out what you want out of this remember you can't have a journey if you don't have a destination so that's like the first thing you need to do you need to figure out what you want right whether it's two years now i don't care but you need to figure out what you want now when you figure out what you want the next thing is what's your secret weapon if people call it value proposition you call it you know uh but what i call it is that what do you have that other people don't have what is, what is your infinity gauntlet right because you're, you're going into a market that has so many designers, so many people who are saying they are they, are, they have empathy. Many people are saying they are they are quick to listen. Many people are saying they can solve problems. Many people are saying a lot of things, right? Those things and they're not secrets. They're not weapons per se. They are what makes you. Just like you are going to you are going to war and you are saying you have a helmet. That's what makes you a better warrior. Everybody has a helmet, right? Everybody can kill. What makes you different? Right? Think of Mulan, for example. What makes Mulan different is not the fact that she's a girl, neither is it the fact that she can fight. It is the fact that she's a girl that can fight. Like it's a combination of two things, basically. That's what makes her different, right? And she doesn't just fight, she fights well. So you want to find your secret weapon. What makes you stand out? What makes you different? What makes you unbeatable, right? Um, that is, again, remember. You want, to be, you want to be like prostitutes. When prostitutes are standing in that junction, they know that this is a prostitute, right? Um, they don't know that. They don't think that this is somebody who is waiting for her daddy to come and pick her. Or this is somebody, mm -mm. you know, this person is here for a purpose. I am for that. I am the purpose so they can come and pick me up, right? That is them. So you want to be that person. You want to really, really, really stand out. So you, you, don't, see, you don't see a prostitute wearing a, uh, you know, a complete overall and putting one big, even if it is cold or when it's funny, you don't see them putting one big um, coat on themselves, right? You see them in proper attire, in proper uniform. So you to wear your proper uniform, you get your secret weapon, um, figure out what really makes you different, what makes you unstoppable, what makes you you, right? Um, that is like the biggest thing you need to do in your preparation after figuring out what you want. And the way you can figure it out is this, right? It's three things. For one, think of this, what can you do best in the world, right? What's the 
thing you can do best in this world? I, I, is, now, the thing about that question is that it might not be what you currently do. It might be something you've not started yet, right? Uh, but you can be best at it. Example now, mostly can be the best farmer in the world. You don't know yet. You haven't started it yet. You're just thinking about it, right? So it's really about what do you want to do that can make you, you know, what can you do that will make you best in the world? That's the, like the first question. When you answer it, write it down. Second question is what are you passionate about? What are you most passionate about? And the last one is can this give you the reward you seek? Remember, I said what reward is money. So if it's money, can you can it make money for you? Now, once you figure out these three things, can it make money for you? Yes. What is the best thing you do in the world? For me, it's teaching actually, not design. And what are you most passionate about? Design. I'm passionate about design, but I can teach best in the world. Like, and then what do you reward? Money. I need money in my life, right? And then bam, the middle of it all. Is what I, I have to do is my secret weapon, right? It's the way I make clients think consistently about me. It's what makes me different from Moski, what makes me different from you know you guys on this platform, right? And so if we line up together and we have 72 people on, on the street, right? I am going to be that prostitute. Right? Yeah, you guys are responsible. Do you understand? I am going to be that prostitute to my kind of client. So you want to answer these questions, find the thing, the, the, the intersection, and that is your secret weapon. And lastly, where do you want to go? Who is your client, right? Is it, are they a Shell or Olusho? You know, like, who is your client? Are they in the hotels or are they in the bar? Are they, you know, are they in the clubs or in the bar? Are they on the island or the mainland? You know, are they in Lagos or they in Akure? Are they in the village or they in the city? Define your client. I used to say these things that you need to define, like completely define your client. I, I, do, I don't know how to explain this, but think of it as going to a club. Now you're, the club is not the club doesn't use white light like my place. It uses blue, red, green light. It is created to mask people, right? Now you're in the club and you see a particular girl that that looks beautiful. Now you don't know she's beautiful. She just looks. You think she's beautiful. Um, firstly, you want to you know you want to approach her, but before you approach her, you want to figure out whether she's your kind of girl. And so the way you do it is that you know you get a drink and uh, first walk by. When you're walking by, she turns your back at you. Okay, you came back again. You're trying to get how I see how I see how I see how I see her. Then you're actually looking at her consistently. You are, you are measuring now, okay, how do I get to see this girl's face? Kill my Shelley. And then uh, you now go, you now stay in front of her on the dance floor. You now start doing, uh, you know, you start doing live video or selfie. You know, starting dancing with her, you know, bah, bah, bish, bish. and you got her face, you now end it. You came back to the bar, you look at her face. Ah. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, she's fine, she's fine. Then you now go and now ask her number. You see, what you just did there is what you should be doing all the time. You know, you should be sizing up your clients. Is this client my client? Someone hits you up, you didn't go and search them on LinkedIn. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they do. You just like, oh, yes, and this is me. Give me my money. Let's talk. You just do, you just do that. And you don't know whether somebody has talked about them before and stuff. Like, you just, like, put yourself into a big problem. The idea is you need to consistently size up your client. Not every client is your client, right? I told you, you can't service everybody, really. Because if you don't figure that out, again, I said, the market will give you anybody. Moski said something. You are looking for a right client. You're not looking for the best client. The best clients can give you the best cash, right? But they will they will, they will, they will put you in trouble. I'll give an example. I have this particular client who reached out to me uh, last month from the referral, and uh, I charged him $6,000 for, for his job. But, Midway into the job, I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to do. He said, I don't need to do anything from you, for you, for me. I don't need you to do what I tell you to do. Ah, I'm like, ah, I have broken not here, dude. I don't do all of those kind of things. It doesn't even work for me. Like, we will fight. I can't be doing red and green and yellow together for you. It won't work. So I was like, no, no, you're not. Like, okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. We're pushing it, we're pushing it, we're pushing it, we're pushing it. But me, I was just looking for a way to like, you know, pop, pop out and say, I'm, I'm not interested, maybe not, not anymore, right? Because you can't work with every client. You need to size up your clients, you know who they are. Else, you're coming on Twitter to complain about clients, right? And when you complain too much about clients, nobody will give you clients because they will think that you are the bad end, right? So size up your clients. I used to say, somebody's poison is another person's meat. The clients you can't work with, somebody else can work with them. So don't think that if you don't work with them, they will die, right? They will find somebody else. Don't know your clients, really, right? You know, know who you want to talk to, know um, who you want to, you want to, you know, relate with, really. And you can be like Moski, uh, like 
whenever a client comes to you, and you know this client is not, is not your kind of client, but you know your friend likes this kind of client. We find your friend, you know, you don't like busty babes, but the guy he likes busty babes. His name is uh, John. You give this to John. John will appreciate you, and he will be your friend. And then when one sees somebody like, like, that is like you, John will be the person to you. you know, it's about the relationship, really. So figure out your client, you know, figure out where you want, where you want to go, where you want to stand, what junction you want to stand in. You don't stand at the junction, you don't stand in front of a hotel, you want to be aimlessly walking on the road, or you want to be at your house, depending on what you want, really. Know your client. Define them to the last. I know my client up until how I want them to actually send me a message, right? I know, <laughs> I know your client down, right down to how I want them to send me a message, right down to um, how much I think they should be earning, I know that I know my clients right down to those points. And now next year is coming. My current client has started just started to send them message. Next year, oh, prices are going up. Oh, in case you want to fire me, let us know now. I'm sure you to somebody. All of them are saying, okay, no worry, they are with you. Somebody just sent me a message now and said, we are going places. I said, amen, amen. But that amen is very important. But you really, really need to know your clients. Really. Now, after you have known your client, next part is selection and stuff, right? Um, first one is what do I need to know or be to be clearly available? Uh, sometimes we really, do, right? After you figure out who your client is and where you're going to, you need to understand that there might be a knowledge gap, right? So you, you might want to begin to find that knowledge gap. If you think that you need to be a strategist to hit your goals, then you need to learn brand strategy. If you think you need to be a pro designer to hit your goals, start learning product design. If you think that design is not your way, you need to start doing something else. Most key, I feel like most key has developed something like you know, that he wants to do farming, right? I had said that he wants to do farming now. He's learning, he's going to learn how to do farming. And now you start making money, right? He's fixing the knowledge gap. So the second phase is selection and kickoff. So you want to begin to fill in that gap, right? Whatever you want to learn, illustration, whatever. whatever. The moment you, you figure out what, now note the idea, remember what the idea, what you can do best in the world. The idea is you don't correctly do it best, yeah? So for you to be best at it, in quotes, relatively, you need to bridge the knowledge gap. If it's visual communication, whatever it is, you know, bridge that knowledge gap. Uh, once you do that, once you are doing that, the next one is what do you need to do to be seen? What do you need to do to be seen? To be available. This is where sales and marketing comes in. So remember Moski's class? Remember Moski's class? You have to pay for it. But Basically, a random idea behind this is that you know, start taking marketing moves, you know, sending messages, putting it out there, creating content, uh, creating valuable content for both clients and designers. You know, position yourself. What do you have to do to shine bright? How do you use your secret weapon? Do you need to snap, or do you need to snap, 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 or do you need to throw, you know, throw your shield like Captain America, or do you need to say Wakanda ten million times? Or do you need to run? Do you need to, you know, bring out your spider web? Every hero has his own superpower. Figure out your superpower and how to use it, really. This is what you need to do to be seen, right? But if you are not, nobody will care about you. There's a reason why when Thor came in Infinity War to Wakanda, he did not come and just appear in camp. He came with thunder. Like, people have to know, I don't come. This is me. And what did they say? Where the hell have you been? What, what happened to Wanda? When Wanda was in the tower protecting vision, in quotes, and they're like fighting, fighting, fighting. And she came and she's not like she just you know, did that thing. And then she was like, throw it up. What did what did that lady say? Why the fuck have you been? Why are you up there? Like, that's the idea. You have papa, why are you hiding? So what you need to do to be seen, you need to have a superpower. Because if you don't have one, then everyone will constantly continue to underestimate you. What's like you underestimate Thanos? Everybody was underestimating Thanos, but they don't know what you can do until you did boom. You need boom. They never even believe that it will actually happen until it actually happened, right? So do everything you can to be seen, right? It could be marketing, it could be creating a campaign. Like it is so funny. Designers so underrate them. I see no reason why you can't do a proper camp, a proper marketing campaign. Like A to Z, do video, do mm -mm. All you do is you just come under somebody's comment. I do lie, I do design, this is my work. I want to design your logo for you. Like why are you so mediocre? Like, be big, be different. It's so easy to be different in this design phase. Everybody's doing the same thing. Be fucking different. Cause trouble on Twitter. Then say you're sorry the next day, like Moski. You know, do something else, like basic stuff, right? Be different. 
it's, see, the thing about being different is that for some people, it might be really hard for you. You might create enemies, right? But again, like I said, you can't service everybody, but you can service somebody. No matter what problem most of it cause, no matter the amount of disagreement me and him we have, right? His people, people who believe in his message will continue to listen to him. People who believe in my message will continue to listen to us. Two of us will make money. At the end of the day, we'll come together and we'll drink alcohol and say, Afra, I'll go to you and we'll move on, right? But the idea really is understanding your superpower and leveraging on it, right? You don't see, you don't see War Machine trying to be like Iron Man. You don't see Iron Man trying to be like Batman. You don't see Spider-Man trying to be like Falcon. You don't see Falcon trying to be like somebody else. Everybody is, bas is basically looking at their superpower. They are focused on that superpower, right? Iron Man can fly, but he doesn't have any superpower. Then there's Hawkeye who can shoot arrows. You don't see Hawkeye trying to say Iron Man should make him a particular suit that can shoot arrows normally. He doesn't need that. And then there's Black Widow, right? Black Widow is just a, she's just cool. She doesn't need arrows. She doesn't need arrows to be to be Black Widow, right? So she doesn't need to copy Hawkeye. Hawkeye doesn't need to copy somebody else, right? Everybody has their role, right? You have a role to play the entire market. Figure out that role and play it. Because there will always be people who need your role. So what do you need to do to be seen? Bring out your secret weapon. And the only way you can bring out a secret weapon is, remember our preparation stage, figure out what it is first. And then lastly, when you are found, what do I do next? Again, most kids that can still available. I think you should be. Go back to Moskia and pay your 3,000 euro. But what you need to do to be, what do, what, what do you do when you're found? That's the sales part, not the onboarding part. He said he's going to do something around onboarding. But that's like really figuring out when they find you and they say, hi, what's about to do this thing? What do you do next? How do you contact them? How do you talk with them? All these things individually help you with your positioning. Remember, positioning is not just being found. It is figuring out when you're found and they're coming back again. They think of you or they think of somebody else, right? That is positioning. It is an everyday consistent thing. You don't do it once, you do it every day. That's the funny thing about strategy. You shouldn't like pay somebody once for strategy. Like you do it every, every day, every day, every day. So what do you do next when you are found, right? If you answer these questions really, I pro let me promise. But if you answer these questions, <laughs> if you answer these questions, but let me promise you, right? I can say this, I can say this very well because it is what I did this year. I'm not telling you, I didn't do these things from, from a textbook, right? If you do, if you answer these questions well, the amount of clarity you would have, right, would be so crazy that you would make, whatever amount you're making currently now, you'll make times five in six months. I'm that positive, right? Because in three months, I made times four. So I can basically tell you that you will make times five, whatever, if I are making between 10 to 50,000, you will make times 10. <laughs> I'm that positive, right? Because the clarity is so crazy. You guys, you guys think it's just words, but when you begin to really, really think about it, you will begin to see the experiences you can exploit and stuff, right? This is basically what we do. Yeah, you think we are doing big things, but we are not. These are the things, it mostly says the story now, right? You would really figure out that you answer this question, whether consciously or unconsciously, you figured it out one way or the other. And then you know it's like applying and applying and applying and applying and applying. And applying. No, he's, he's a rich man, what can I say? But now, lastly, the local room. This local room is basically like, okay, now you've, you've handled the clients, right? What happens next? Um, so local room is like after a match. Now, so the first one is how do you continue to stay an option? The biggest, anybody who has made the most money this year made this from the firehouse. One of clients, you one of clients are like coming, 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 coming. But clients will come back. Clients will continue to come back, right? New clients are really, really hard to come by. Your job is to create a community you can sell to. So you want to ensure that everybody who comes to you has a reason to come back. Whether it's for the, it's for the same project or for a different project, or they refer somebody to you, everything is a comeback idea, right? So you've closed the gap. You know where the solution is. How do they find you quickly? And most importantly, how do you continue? I I've this place. How do you continue to be an option, right? How what do you need to do to ensure they remember you? Like how do you sound? Do you make them feel happy? You know, do you do you answer them on time? Do you hit your deadlines? How's your process like? All those kind of things. Like you need to constantly, you know, do them and stuff. And then lastly, and this is like the sweetest part, right? Uh, how do you reward them for finding you? Um, how do you reward them for finding you? How do I explain this? Um, make them good, right? Make them feel good. How do you reward them for finding you? Have you guys, again, I don't know why, this is like the best, the best description. So let's go back to prostitutes again for just a minute. Now, wait, 
you see guys that do say that I have a regular, like it's, it's just this one person that comes out all the time. Just this one person, same, 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 same. You get why? You get why? Ask them, don't ask them. You get why? Now that same girl, go, 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 go. She is treating them right. Eh? She's treating them right. So again, be a first student, treat your clients right. Treat them proper. You know, go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. Go every, go. They hired you for logo design, do content. They hired you for social media, do strategy. They hired you for um, graphic design, do printing. Go the extra mile. Because what they remember you for is not for what they paid you for. It's for the fact that you took it as personal as possible. Make them feel completely good. They like drinking alcohol, right? They like drinking alcohol, buy for them. I, I had the clients who called me today. I, my, my day didn't start today until like 12 p.m. He called me around 11 and said, hello, please, how, how are you doing? I said, oh, I'm fine. It was like, what is wrong? Why are you sounding like this? And I'm like, uh, nothing. I'm, I'm actually really, really good. He said, you just woke up, Abby. He said, well, it looks like it. He said, OK, OK, you know what? You're sounding really stressed, but I'm still going to stress you. And he does what he needs. He's like, OK, no problem. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to reach out to the dev, and he will fix it and stuff. He's like, OK, so I pray you really should rest. You know, go out and smoke some stuff. <clears throat> In my head, I'm like, what is that? What makes you think I smoke? But well, I didn't ask him though. I was like, you know, smoke some stuff, you know, drink, relax. Should I call the girl for you? I'm like, ah, ah, my life. Well, the idea is make them feel good, really good, make them feel like superstars, right? Because if you do, you will be a superstar to them for life. Make them feel like superstars and you will be their hero. And that's something I'm already definitely sure of, right? But you can only do this, you only do this for clients who actually fit your profile. If clients are actually pissing you off, you don't have time to to make them superstars because you spend all your time trying to please them. But when you have clients that fit into your profile, what you will consistently continue to do is that you want to make them feel good. And that's the best way you can reward them. No, it's not by giveaway. See, they are, you, I don't know why you do giveaways to your clients. Because mostly, I mean, the clients are the ones paying you. Like, literally, they're usually richer than you. Like, if your clients, if they're your clients, you are talking to the wrong clients. The clients should be richer than you. So therefore, it means that you cannot do giveaway for them. So what you need to do is give them what they don't have, right? They have 10 problems, and they call, they call it to solve two, solve four, and then they, re, they remember you for life, right? It's that simple, really. I have clients who have turned to fans. I have clients who have turned to long-time friends. I've had clients who have turned to a girlfriend, right? You get why, right? You get why, you know, we worked hard for it and everything. So um, then, 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 you know, uh, our last place and then when you do all of these things you know you are positioning yourself already you're getting positioned and stuff uh, and so you don't have to position yourself to find clients right i remember i told you if you don't put on if you don't put the extra effort clients will still find you it's just that they will come on twitter next and complain to us it's, still, it's definite anybody has complained on twitter about clients like they constantly complain now because say you know they follow clients talk go, 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 and they're fucked up but positioning gives you the client on your own terms, right? It gives you the client that you want, clients who will not disturb your clients, who will not charge, who will not price your client, your money from 700K to 50K, or who will tell you that eh, it should be just a logo. Mm -mm. See, I've seen guys, see, I was, in, I, was in, I was in live chat one day and someone said, why should anybody pay 800K for a logo? When they said that, I just left the live chat, like, mm -mm. why don't I just stay away, please? Like, don't fuck me up, please, for Christ's sake. So. You know, it gives you your client on your own then allows you to control the narrative, control the entire process, control the funnel, allows you to find your own little island and be your own Moana, you know, be your own hero, control who comes to the island and send every other person away. Why? It's your island, right? Every other person can find their own island somewhere else. It allows you to control who you want to collaborate with, um, who you want to work with, the level of, of work you want to be doing. Uh, allow you to do all of those things. That is the ideal positioning. And one of the ways to do it, remember what I was saying that you need to make yourself be seen clearly. One of the ways to do it is to have a really, really good portfolio. Right? I have an amazing portfolio. I have invested a lot of energy, time, and money into building a website for next year. Like, I have invested so much money and saying that okay, this is what I'm going to do. My guys were like, I was like, guy, you're spending this much money on, on the website. I'm like, Mm, yeah, yeah, I am, I am. But then you guys will see, you guys will eventually see what it's going to turn out to next year. Like it's like a really, really big project. But I know that it's going to eventually pay off, right? It's going to definitely pay off. So guys, like you need to invest hardly into positioning. 
positioning is like um people think of it as like a really big thing to do but it's really not like it's so simple i, I mean i've been talking and talking but really it's simple you just you know you just start it from one and then you just you know continue 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 and then you start making money really but again you money is money is the right reward for pretty amazing positioning think of anybody mention one person is successful in this world that like you don't know him for something like you can't mix it for any other thing you can't mix it for any other think of Barry Barry did not get here because he was random he positioned himself for how many years like three regimes Obasanjo Yaradua and Kulok Jonathan like he continued and what, what really worked for him was that at first he was more of a CPC thingy you know I said I'll use, I'll use Barry after it was more of CPC you know pushing it you know pushing the uh, disciplinarian, this thing, and then almost some job one and left, and then uh, Yaradua came in, and then uh, Yaradua continued, you know, the, the, the same trend, and I think he still didn't, nothing happened really, he didn't really win it, he didn't win, didn't win it yet, but Yaradua was still, he felt, you know, Yaradua was gentle, his, that was what people wanted, but Barry continued, he, he knew his goal, his goal was not to make money, but his goal was, was to have power, Presidency was the result, by the way. So you know, his goal was to his goal was to reach the presidency. Power was the result, was the reward, right? So like he wanted to get the presidency, and so then Yaradua went away, and then Gulag came in as the acting president. And when Gulag was going to like challenge for his own tenure, who was there again? Vary. And the funny thing about it is that Vary got to point and said, "You know what? It's like CPC is not working at all. Position you share I need to, you know, I need to gather, I need to put myself in a position where the West and the South can find me as a proper post, as a proper replacement for the next year. And what did he do? He merged with ACN and one other, one other party, and it became APC, right? And what he, he just came at that, you know, so that, you know, Eurobas can be like, yeah, where is our point now? And he was still leading the North in a really large number. And then he had the South South, who was like, you know, like this, like this. But then he had his idea. And then when he was coming in, God helped him. And then Jonathan like fucked up his government with corruption and stuff. And then he came in and said, change. And God helped us. Ah, but people who did this branding then, they so lied to us, told us change the disciplinarian, where he gets in discipline. You know, he was crying, he protested. And you guys think that if someone like that, someone as old as him can invest that much into position and you should not do it. Why? But it took him like 12 years to actually get there. And then when he was going to get there and he got into presidency, that's like onboarding the clients, right? Now, for four years, he continued. He continued that way, you know, he did some little, little um, you know, corruption fighting and we thought he was working, you know, he did, um, you know, he did trigger money, he was working, you know, he did those small, small things. He did a lot of bad things, but those things were common, but they were not amplified by him, they were amplified by others. And then he will not do small things, amplify that one, and it will be like the same thing, his positioning. And then when he was leaving office, when he was finishing office into like into the, the last election, and Atiku was coming in, Atiku was just starting his own positioning. Like Atiku was just about to start his own. Rather than building it for 12 years, he just continued. Remember what I said in this place? I said, reward them for finding you, right? And that's what Barry did to that money. He just rewarded everybody. Like he rewarded the Yoruba people, you know, they like money. He rewarded all of them with 10,000. 10, 10, 10, Those guys just forgot three years of bad governance and said, that is our next goal, that is our next thing. And then Tinubu came and, you know, and then he sold and sold and sold and sold and sold, so PDP for being the problem of Nigeria for the past 12 years and everything. And then he won again, right? So if, he, if someone as old as Barry can actually do these things, right? What excuse you really have? So, which only gives you the kind of your own terms, and uh, unless you don't want to be in control, do brand positioning. I hope you guys have gotten something today. Any questions? Any questions, anyone? God, I'm so fucked out. Any questions, guys? Blessing, yes, you can get, I'll send it to Muski. I guess you'll send it to your email, right? Um, so guys, any questions? <laughs> Any questions, guys? Someone is raising his hand. So I'm saying. Yeah, Mario Francis. Uh, yeah, Francis, please ask your question. Um, if you have one, you can just type it out, guys. Please just type out your question. It's easier for me to follow. Just in case. All right. Um, thank you, Chris. So you actually killed everything. 
um I don't know, it's what I would have said. Uh, everything you said. I said thank you. I said um everything you said is what I would have said actually, to be honest. I I think I think it's the same like that. Like <laughs> I feel that I feel that um uh, every successful person, um there's always a guide that comes naturally. You understand? There's always a guide. It just come and you feel that okay, this is the next thing to do. This is the next thing to do. You understand? Actually, I me, mean, I don't even have the opportunity to to listen to designers like you those days when I was you know growing up. So I wonder how I got here. It was all how I put it. I don't know. It just came naturally. You understand? And you were saying something yeah. about I think I don't know. I've forgotten. I just wanted to ship in that. Uh, I need we need to talk about being intelligent as designers. It's not most as in. Seriously, you need to be smart, like for real. I feel that, uh, for example, um, I might not be smart in book, right? So I have to be smart somewhere else. There are some places you guys, some of you are smarter. You understand that normal. If you find it, you can leverage it, then apply whatever you learned there, or, you know, just apply it to the position that you are right yeah. now. I am very smart. When it comes to uh, you know, uh, let me just let me tell you a, a simple story of how I discovered that okay, this part of me is just crazy. In my uh, my secondary school, I wasn't popular at all. Like I was very lucky. I just had three friends in school. Okay, in my all throughout my secondary school, I don't I don't know anybody. I don't shit up. I was just going on my own. Understand? But I was working with one guy. I used to work with one guy like that. I, I knew I was a friend to a very popular person. The, the guy is not as if he's lousy, he's the smartest of, like he's the most intelligent student. He represents us in competitions, he wins Olympiad, uh, Calvin Mathematics and all those things. Like, you know, I we are friends. So people know him, you understand? Because so people know, a lot of people know him, so they know me. So but I don't talk literally, but on Facebook, I was very, very loud. You understand i was extremely loud so basically i was always you know that in these things my body is till now people don't know me or not try if i if i if i walk if you come to my street now where i live and um and then you say things like please do you know who Mosky is nobody people will tell you they don't know me they don't understand but on the internet space i just had that prayer i just have that friend the same thing when i entered university people don't know me like for real they don't know me uh, in my faculty all they knew was that somebody called Muske was existing. Is it that it makes noise on the you know, learning pages or something like that? It was just it was just everywhere, you understand? So I think that was just what I applied. I like to brand the name. Maybe you might not know who is behind it, but you know that this account is existing, you understand? So basically, there's are places that you are smart. You are smarter than what you think or just find it. Once you find that thing, you can leverage on it. You can use it to do your marketing. You can use it to do your niche. You understand? So, and one thing again, I used to beg designers to is that there are some questions that you can find answers to yourself. Number one, it reduces familiarity and you know embarrassing situations. Um, so questions, don't ask me some questions. I really really hate it. I don't like when people come to my team to ask me some weird questions. There are some questions you can for you. For real, we need to talk about that part. There are some questions you can you can find out for yourself. One thing about finding out things yourself is that you'll find out more than you actually go for. You get so please know how to use Google and YouTube, especially those two. Know how to use it. Like at least Google will actually show you to maybe give a link to um, YouTube or so many other places like that. But it is important that you know how to ask the right question. Stop asking dumb questions. It's bad. It makes you lazy. For you, I don't like it. I don't like when people do that. So we are smart. For you, God gave us. Everybody has that thing. Everybody has his own. So just find it. Honestly, if you find it, you can use it to do any. You can use it to exploit wealth. To exploit anything, you understand. So don't be like that guy that God gave one coin. I've been one talent and I want to bury it. For you, if it's that you work on it, you can actually um, make one more talent. You, you understand? So there's one thing that is there. Just find it. You understand? I'm just trying to like encourage you. 
as designers. Okay, so so uh, uh, I would have. What, I was I was hoping. Let's, 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 like, get this question. Okay, some questions like, are here. Questions plenty for you, Sharp. Like, there isn't so many. Man, you like look for them, thirty minutes and stuff. So someone asked, okay. um, how do you build up to getting? No, someone started with. Uh, but Jesus Christ. Um, okay, where and how do you sell to your target audience? So Mario Francis, um, it's a design partnership course that is five thousand euro. I think five thousand euro for the for the videos. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Mosky, how much? Yeah, five thousand yeah, videos. Five k. <laughs> no, mostly just include in, in your email to them and say they want to get it, they should buy it from me. Like it's really loaded. I didn't attend the class, but I know it's loaded. Uh, but I'll give like a summary of what I think mostly would have said. And where do you sell to your audience? Remember, I said in today's session, I said that um, think about prostitutes. See, they're like the, they are so informal, but I they are the, I, I, I pass around 11 p.m. and I see that because I stay near, I said like stay near three hotels here in my, in my estate. But I pass by there and I'm, and I'm like, Oh, well, these guys, they walk, I beg you. No, I'm just in my house, right? So where do you sell to your diet? Where, where do you sell to your target audience? You sell where they look for you, right? So if your target audience are in, are in Lagos and you're in Akure, you have no business doing anything related to Akure. It means that you need to be in Lagos. For example, I'm in Lagos. I'm in Akure, but I'm in Lagos, technically, right? So I don't think, I don't say, you don't need to relocate. You know, like, begin to... People think I'm in Lagos. All my clients might even think I'm in Lagos. Once they ask me, where are you? I'm in Accra. They're like, well, you know, structure yourself. Like, be in Lagos. Have Lagos connect. Have Lagos network. Don't say that you don't know what to do in Lagos. You need to buy a hotel. If you need to make money to stay in hotels, start saving money for hotels. Yeah. Find friends in Lagos so that when you're coming to Lagos, how far they come inside and they crash with your side. Begin to build structures so that when you want to sell to them, you are putting yourself there. Guys, I have, like... In the middle, Alpha Muski, where you did, you did Keja. I get one client for a Keja, they come on your side. Muski be like, uh, Alpha, and I just want the. And you realize they are calm. Somebody else in Yaba, know that okay, Keja Yaba is Alpha guy. It is really, really, yes. Alpha, I come on your side, I get one client for Yaba. Okay, I have a client in Becky. Hello, please. Uh, Alpha, you did go here. Can I come and stay with you? Like, it's that simple. Just one day, just two days. Like, you know. Be begin to build networks, right? Are you scared of people? Like one of the biggest things, one of the biggest currencies you can actually have as a designer is people, not just clients, but designers like you, designers who understand the struggle. Because when I call mostly and say I have a client, he knows the struggle to find a client. So he can empathize with me when I tell him that I, I don't have money for a hotel, I like you, they can't stay your side. And you'll be like, okay, now I know why you can come around. And then because we are we are, we are designers, we'll see, we'll talk, you know, we'll share ideas, we we'll help me out with this particular client, help me with my portfolio, you know. Like okay, look up, look what I'm doing. If he knows the client, ah, I'm this client, or some person is having this client. I've seen guys who have you know built a huge business from just networks, right? So you want to, you know, put yourself where your target audience is and begin to be structured around it. And when you put yourself there, how do you sell to your audience by talking basically? Remember, it's to show your superpower. Some people have hired me because I am an introvert, like nothing else. Just because I'm a quiet person, they've hired me, right? Some people have hired me because I know my job. Some people have hired me because I told them, I, I was so proud on a call one day. Like, people have hired me because I, I was proud, by the way. Like, I was so proud on a call one day. And the guy was like, I was trying to rambling, 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 telling me all the things he wanted to do. And I told him, okay, yeah, you're right. Um, but just in case you know, right, this is not my first time working with people like you. It, it, it was a Canadian client, and she was, she was like, just going on. So this is a new audience, right? This is a new audience, so you need to understand me. I've been working with you. I was like, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's a new audience. But it's still the same thing I'm doing for you, right? I have worked with two Canadian clients. I have helped them make enough money, build clients for them. I've helped people make 5 million era. I've helped somebody else release the highest number of donations in the last 22 years. I, I've helped an NGO raise 5 million in within one day of launch, in their first day of launch, in just one program. I have helped somebody sell out his booth on, on the day of his launch. I have I mentioned a lot of them at the end of the day, and I told him, if that is not enough for you to trust me to do my job, then people have not been working together. <laughs> And she was like, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm so sorry about lashing out at you. And then she continues that way. So sometimes you'll have to brag honestly. Don't go and lie that you have done this thing when you have not done it. Brag honestly, say the right things, right? Um, 
Like you must go and brag. No, brag perfectly. Tell the things you've done. You've done a thousand logos. If you've done a thousand logos, then a thousand and one logos will be simple for you to do. It's easy, right? Brag properly. I've not done a thousand logos. I am not going to lie. But I've done logos that make money. I've done logos for people who have stand up. And I've done logos that have failed, basically. But I won't tell you that they have failed. I just tell you I've done 10 logos. It has failed, but two is successful. I'll tell you about the two successes. That's the idea of branding. Show the things that will make them, you know, believe you. So how do you sort your target audience? Tell them what they need, not what they want to hear. Tell them what they need, right? And tell them how you fit into that into that um, process. If you tell them what they want to hear, you fuck yourself up big time. For example, the Delsys project I worked on 500K last year. It was supposed to be a branding project. But the client was moving front and back. Why should I pay you 500K for a branding project? And that's how I went down. And I put myself in trouble. I said, okay, yes, yeah, so we will do branding for you. We'll do digital marketing. We'll do web design. We'll do web development. All under 500K. And he's like, okay, yes, now I believe you. And to send you the project. If a four big project, or no, a two month project turned to six months and it didn't finish. So when we finished the project, the client ended up going back to the farm thing he was doing. And I was like, shit. Right. So tell them what they need to hear. If they don't fit into that problem, if they don't see any potential of the solution, they're probably not your client, right? Because if you if you dive into it all the, all the same, you're just like putting yourself into trouble. So where do you sell to your target audience? Where they are, how do you sell to them in their own language, right? And that way to say it is this, if you're talking to a Malam, don't tell the Malam you're a branding designer. He doesn't know what branding designer is. Tell him you do posters and billboards. You will understand that one. You will pay your money and you will do logos and whatever. Sell to your client in the language they understand. I think that should help you out. How do you build up to getting six figures? It's simple, sell to more people. Um, sell to more people, sell to people who can pay you more. Basically, the idea is not by just saying you want to earn six figures. Sell to more people, charge more, earn more. Change your, change your circle of clients is actually 10K. It means you need to get more because 10K can get to six figures. You just have to work more. You want to work less, increase your figures, get people who can pay you more. It's that simple, really. But most likely, if you're actually 10K now, don't just jump to 200K. I fuck you up. Like it's fuck you up big time. Remember, there's always a knowledge gap. People who charge 200K now, they know something that you don't, right? So you need to figure out what they know. And before you can start charging 200, because if you don't, you believe you charge 200 k, a client will pay you that 200 k, but in your mind you will constantly feel that gap, and you be like doubting yourself, like you don't know, you feel like you have not not done something complete yet. So you need to really figure out that gap before you jump to that point, right? Because again, money is an exchange of value. You need to figure out what value comes in for that amount of money. Um, someone asked me, did you have to work full time at some point while starting out? The only time I worked full time was when I was working for myself. I never worked for at any company. Um, the only company I actually worked for as a designer sat me in two weeks because I was telling the, the CEO that could it work? This can't work. I can't do this for you. <clears throat> it's not going to work. So, the CEO was like, no, design is not fine. He sent me his own design. Design was horrible. I was like, Asa, no, I can't do this for you. It will not work. Two weeks later, he sat me. And um, well, I was sad. Then a, week, a, a year later, he comes back to me. First, he said he had a project and he was looking for a local designer. And the only person that came to his mind was Space Oh, well, like, let's dig into it. And within four months, within, yeah, within two months, we worked on two projects. Some project, I charged him, I charged him X. He paid me two X, right? And that's one that sacked me two weeks. That sacked me two weeks into a job, right? So that's positioning, for example, because he knows that when he's working with me, I'm going to be the best thing for him. I'm going to like, Cow and tell him this is what whatever I tell me to do. I'm, I have a cannot tell you alone. Anyway, that's it. So I didn't have to work full time. But again, like I said, your journey is unique. If you need to work full time, the neighbors should bring full time positions to you, like to push it to you, like this, back, 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 back to back to back, back to back. And then the day you find it, you you probably work it. And I think that eventually I'll full time at the company, probably for a year or two. But I don't think that's where I'm ending up. So I don't know what I'm, I don't know where, where my future is going to get to. I know my current objective, but it's not yet my future. It's probably like 2021. But as the day think of the next thing. Life is too short to start having 100 year goals. Um, as a business, how do you position? I mean, that's the idea of the entire session, I guess. I mean, as I've been saying for like an hour plus now on how to position yourself. So just think, remove your name and put business inside it and do the same exact thing. Um, when you say define your client, do you mean personal or industry? I mean everything. When you ask me this question, it's like saying, when you say 
tell me your spec. Do you mean face or sexuality? I mean, everything, of course. Do you like bi? Do you like gay? Do you like straight? Do you like queer? Do you like um, asexual? What do you like? Like, say that's one. Then continue. Should they be tall? Should they be short? Should they be on Twitter? Should they not be on Twitter? Should they be loud? Should they be big? Should they be small? Should they be, you know, brief, high, non brief, whatever? You know, complete it. Like, state it out. That's where your client should be. Because if you are giving, you are giving it open ended questions, you, you will continue to get confused. Should I hire this person or not? I know a guy whose client's personal one is female. Like, he never has male client, always female client. And they pay bills, by the way. Even if he has a male client, he'll be talking to the wife. Like, the wife is the one constantly talking to him. That's how crazy it is. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't intentional, but the neighbors gave it to him. He's a fine boy, by the way. So, it works. He doesn't, he doesn't trouble himself too much. That fine boy, they help him a lot. Um, isn't it possible to have the same superpowers with another designer? When you miss superpowers, are you talking about design skills or business-wise? I'll give you two reasons. Now, there's Batman and there's Iron Man. These two guys don't have superhuman powers. They asked Iron Man, who the fuck are you? You are so fucking proud. What, outside this suit, who are you? What did he say? Billionaire, playboy, and philanthropist. That is superpower. It's not Iron Man. Mm -mm. No, say genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Those four things are his superpower. For Batman on the, on the other one, they asked him, what's the superpower? What did he reply? Money, right? You be, now, Batman and Iron Man are quite similar. They don't have powers, right? Well, they have things. They are similar, but when you say Batman versus Iron Man, the way they use it are different, right? Batman does not use, you know, does not kill, does not have those high high tech thingy. He has high tech, but not like Iron Man. He doesn't have AI controlling him. He has Alfred at back, but Alaya like has AI, he has Friday or whatever, right? So you might have the same superpowers, but the way you use them are different. And the way you describe them also is different. For, for, for Iron Man, it's not just money for him. It's just being a billionaire, but also being a genius. You know, it, it's, it's that, it's, it's that, that his parents also got, got killed by Batman, but that didn't like define his an entire trajectory as a person, right? So yes, the fact that you have the, the same superpowers does not mean that you be the same person. The way you describe it are different, right? I might, I might be, I might be, I might be an introvert. Some might be exactly like me, but also be an extrovert. Some might be exactly like me, but uh, you know, you might not like my kind of clients. So you can, there will always be some sort of difference, right? The way fingerprints are different, the way DNA are different, and it's also the way that human brains as a whole or your minds or whatever are different. So yeah. So there's some sort of difference. Someone said, when you said choose your client, do you mean by industry niche or their characters? Again, everything. Hi, Pris. Please, what additional value can you recommend for a designer to upsell a client who probably wants a logo or a flyer design? First, not to do additional value, don't upsell. The idea of upselling is selfish in itself. When you want to reward a client for coming to you, genuinely reward them. Say, um, you want a logo design, say, okay, great, I can do logo designs for you, I can do the labels for you alongside, right? But the way you upset this, instead of you doing all the labels, you can say you can do an additional delivery, say you can do a letterhead. you like, oh, you can do a letterhead, yeah, yeah, I can do it for you for free. Like, okay, cool. You do business cards too. Oh, yeah, I do business cards, it costs $300. Simple. But if they don't need it, they won't mention it to you, right? So the way you upset is first give free value. And then, you know, bait them into it. Tell them, I can do letterheads for you for free. But uh, I don't know, would you need business cards? I mean, it's fine if you don't need them, but would you? <laughs> and they will be like, eh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I might do it later on. I'm like, yeah, you could do it later on, but you know, it might cost you more. But since you're doing it with everything here, I, I could give you at a 60% discount. What do you think? Now I'm talking like Christo again. But you guys get the idea, right? You know, that's like, um, don't upsell directly. Don't say, I do logos, then I also do these things, right? They come to you for logo design because they truly believe there are problems in logo design. Ensure sure you solve that problem first. Let them trust you well enough before you can upsell. If they don't trust you enough, whatever upselling you are doing, they will just see another designer who wants their money. They won't see that as bad, you will see that torsion. So yeah, if you want to truly upsell any client, uh, actually solve their problem. When you truly solve their problem, you see more problems. You see more problems to solve in their, their space, and that's where you can actually um, 
um, of sale. Someone said, I think it's better to have common sense. Smart, smart has the bias. If you're smart without common sense, then you're not smart. It's that simple. I don't, I don't think there's, there's any bias to that. If you're smart without common sense, you're not smart. Um, someone asks another question. Your business is based on full branding. Uh, no, no, my business is not based on full branding. My business is based on people. Branding is just a how. My business is based on you know teaching people, helping people do better stuff. Check my my bio on Twitter. That's my business. Although I make money, by the way. Most key is your rhyme. Is this your rhyme of report or is that your rhyme of report? I guess so. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, please, the cartoon freak. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means. For example, in Nigeria, that doesn't like working Nigerians. Is that a bad thing? Most clients feel like I'm being proud when I profile them and know that they are not worth the stress. But first things, when you say most clients, are you saying they're already working for you already or they are not they're about to work with you? First, it's not bad if they don't like working in Nigeria. Also, I don't think that Nigerians are bad with the clients. They are bad clients everywhere. See, my current, my worst client currently is a comedian and I hate that. Oh, God. So fucking annoying. It's kind of crazy. But then, you know what? We've been for all the practitioners did, did, did. But what I would what I would say is that yeah, it's not bad to not work on Nigerians. Like it's totally not bad, right? Um, but when you say your clients, you say your clients are not worth the stress. First thing, this I think this is basic designer ethic. Any designer that doesn't do this thing is fucked up. The moment you say yes to a client, I don't care how much they are paying you. The moment you tell your client, yes, I will work with you mandated to do your best like i don't know why you would say yes you cannot you won't do your best right i don't care if you stress you or not like do the best you can the moment you say yes but if you don't have said yes you know don't try and make them feel bad like i told you your poison is somebody else's meat right just find someone who will see them as meat and give it to them you, you can't eat snake when it's alive there are people there are people who whose life is to eat snake right so you know transfer them when you profile clients don't tell them to their face that is what they are for example, don't tell the client you can't, okay, okay. this is what I, I used to do before, but I've stopped really. Don't tell the client that they can't afford you. Don't, it's, don't remind them that they are broke, right? Or wrong. Just tell them that you are not a good fit, right? Or sometimes let them come to that conclusion themselves. I like doing that a lot of times. Like, when they come to conclusion themselves, I don't tell them that you can't afford me. Or wrong. I mean, from the, see, I've seen a client that says, hello. Men said, hello. This person can't afford me. I need some beginning, right? But you know, you don't have to continue with and say, okay, yeah, hi, how you doing? Fine, good. I want to do a logo. I say, okay, good. I, I do logos from you know 400k upwards. I say, oh, that's been my project. I say, oh, no problem, no problem. What's your project, by the way? He says, okay, yeah. He says, don't worry. I say, trust me, just tell me what's your budget. We can work something out. And okay, my budget is like between 70k and 80k. I'm like, oh, that's good. I have someone who, who, who can work this out for you. Are you interested? Usually, I used to say no. I just feel like I'm being proud. But you see. I do really. I mean, I have someone who can really, really work for you. I mean, someone who has who has worked with me a lot. He he has he has achieved a lot of things. His clients are like you know making you know fifty percent profit, and um, you really, really love enjoy working with him. I know a particular person who I did it for. He, he was saying that praise, you are fucking me or praise, you are sending me a win. I'm like, trust me, you will like this person. And like, no, no, no. I was like, see, whatever you say, you like me. I'm busy. I'm really, really busy. I like you. Right? You know you're my guy now, and that's why I'm giving it to this person and everything. I know eventually he actually likes the guy, but really, don't tell them the like that they don't have money. Just um, let them come to the conclusion themselves. Um, let's see if I have other questions. Do you take students on brand strategy? Uh, no, no, I don't. In fact, I don't, I don't take students at all. I'm packed out. See, meet meet this guy. Meet Moski. Moski has the time. I don't like. I do. This is this is this first class session so right now, right? It's like it's like uh, you know, mostly it's my guy. So let, let's do it. But I'm fucked up big time. Come on. So no, I don't take students on brand strategy. Um, I learned brand strategy through through trial and error. I'm going to lie. I didn't exactly like take a class. Uh, my best session on brand strategy was when I applied it on my own brand. Like I did strategy for myself for one week and I applied it on my own brand, and then it made money for me. I was like, yeah, this is fucking brand strategy. I mean, I've been doing, you know, mission statement, vision statement. Nobody made money from having a good mission statement. Nobody, not a single person, no. Right? But then, you know, actually doing that strategy, like, you know, planning the positioning, planning the words, planning the structure, planning how you want to do stuff, 
your you know the sessions you want to have you know how you want to improve your brand image how to increase your brand equity how to ensure that when clients come to you and begin to talk to you they are already figuring out how much how many six figures that they put behind is it five or six right how to make them have that idea in their head you know the goals i want to have they want to switch in tfa in two years like you know all those things i, I didn't just do this myself my brand figuring out that my brand is not just mine I'm not like every regular freelancer out there, right? I'm not a freelancer that works in them. I have a freelancer, I'm a freelancer with a huge team. Like you can put my team beside Moski's team and you think I, I, I own an agency, but I don't, right? But yeah, I have a team as large as 30 people behind me who I can reach out to across skills. I'm talking about video, motion, communication, social media management, anything. I can take on any large project. And actually take it all the way, not alone, but with the big team behind me. That's my brand. And so when I was doing my brand, I was doing it alongside every other person. Like, guys, this is your own brand. Because for me to truly achieve my goals, you guys need to achieve your goals. I can't be a superstar. You guys are like fans. No, you guys need to be superstars. My guys know me. I don't go alone, right? I'm like the DMW of design. Yeah, that way. I'm like the DMW of you know, there's the David and there's me of wine, and there's Dremel, there's Peruzzi. Sometimes my best works were not done by me, they were done by them, right? But you guys will not know that's the idea of the brand, you know, share portfolio and whatever. Like every single decision we've made was actually behind brand strategy. It was like core of everything. And if you ask me, you, you continue to see it all the time. Like my strategy around people, around building families, around uh, building um, a team, a closed circle of team who can consistently trust each other to, you know, do their job and then we come together and like we look like we are, we are superstars basically then that's the idea and that's the reason why the tribe is going the way it is everybody every single person in the tribe has made times for whatever they made last year and that that did not happen from you know just random talking it was basically from you know really really figuring out what we wanted our brand strategy to look like can you host the webinar on your branding process please there's a course coming on next 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 year February with overlay. That's me and Leslie is the one hosting it. I just have the, the opportunity to be the guest on it. It's an eight week identity design course. It's about, you know, it's about $120 and $150. Start saving for it. But no webinar not with Is there a way for someone to join your tribe? No, 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 there's no way. Mm -mm. It's called a tribe for a reason. You don't join it, you grow it. So the idea is that you grow your own tribe, not join my own. My own tribe, they've been coming two years back. You can't just join, you'll be like a, be like a stranger. They start looking, you start saying, bye bye, go on, go on, go on. We don't want someone like that. So um, I would advise that you begin to grow your own tribe, uh, grow your own your own circle of friends. For example, mostly has his own, he and his team at, 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 at IOSA. You can consider that a tribe. So find somebody around you, a friend, a friend, a designer friend, like three designer friends or four designer friends, you know, like get them together. And say, guys, let's go together. And then you see one mentor. That mentor is a mentor to four of you guys. You know, I have mentors everywhere. Whenever I have access to somebody, sometimes I call them in to talk to my guys. So you know, is that is that simple? Um, so it's a fifty eight k is not bad for a course. Interesting. You buy have money in this world, in this part of the world. Um, <laughs> so guys, uh, I, I think that that's all on questions. I guess uh, how do I apply for mentorship? You don't. I, I, I don't do mentorship. Most he does mentorship. Reach out to him. I don't do mentorship anymore. At least not, not right now. Almost he does. He has a lot of mentees. I think he can reach out to him. Um, yeah, any, any, any other questions, guys? Really. It's been really nice talking to you guys. Amazing stuff. But you guys can follow me on Twitter by the way. And just DM me or stuff. Remember, you can ask me questions. Just don't ask me to mentor you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so, um, any other question? Because Chris has killed everything, so I don't, I don't think I need to add, add to anything at no, all. So, most you remember how people were thinking like we're going to fight. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to fight. <laughs> ah, it was crazy though. Like I was like, yeah, how far See, you guys? actually, actually. When you were saying something about branding that okay uh, you did branding and so seriously i could relate to it um let me try and re let me reclaim the host i want to i want to show you guys something so I look know. at this um so i remember this this is um like i think many years ago maybe three years ago when i was trying to do the Eota thing so I remember I had, I did this thing. Maybe you guys can try it. 
right? This is before it actually came in, you understand? So I had this. Um, coming. I don't know where it is actually, but I'm, I'm trying to find it. Um, I did I did a full pitch. I see what I'm going to. This is the idea. What if anybody wants to invest into 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 my company? What should I what should I be as in I should have something to present, right? So I did this um let me see. Uh, pitch. That's about ah, I don't know. Okay, you guys should probably go and look for pitch deck, right? You can start that way. Start that way, you might know how to write on branding. You understand? You might be able to uh, put yourself. Let me see if I can find it. I'm just trying to get it. Just give me some minutes. Um, so many things I've done with this this company called Delta. Those days. Okay. I can't find it. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to show you guys. I'll look for it then I'll, I'll show you guys. So you can write a pitch, right? A pitch is like from the beginning to the end. How are you going to run the whole thing? How are you going to start and how are you going to finish? And if you can achieve that goal, if you can, if you can make it possible, like, okay, uh, I was able to write a pitch deck. You understand? You would have... Let me just ask, what is your title? What do you do exactly? <laughs> he said, I don't know what I do. <laughs> I've done everything that I could do, you understand? So basically, if you can write from the beginning to the end, you understand? Um, let me find please. So let me look for the, let me look for the pitch deck. Let me look for the pitch deck. Seriously, I, I think it's very important. It's very important. I don't know if you guys will give me some minutes to look for it. Please, boy, you can go on with the section, actually. Let me try and look for it. Yeah. Find there's, um, there's one I, I had. Um, uh, trying Uh, yeah. Can, can I can I share my screen? Yeah, you can. You can. You can. You can. I can share my screen. Have you been able to find the host now? Sorry, you sorry. Somebody just somebody else the host. Somebody else, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a criminal. <laughs> the priest. I don't even know that you are not the one. Okay, okay. All right. Uh yes. Uh let's go into All right. Um, can you guys see my screen? Tell me you can. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. All right. So this is like a roadmap I did for for Neptune in, in 2019. This is like our, our second year uh, starting as a design agency. So as we sort of started last in 2018, but the, the growth was a, a lot slower, and then I, I didn't have the kind of experience I already had. But um, and just like an overview of what we made. Uh, but so what, what we did, what I did that day was like sort of like really, really figured out exactly 
So this this was 2018, and this was we bring our goals. Right? What did we do? What did we do last year? We had we hired a political gig, just su successful. Uh, we were sort of sustainable. It means that the business was paying itself without um, actionable. We're not like putting our own money into it anymore. Uh, we made at least a millionaire sales within two months. Uh, we started up our rates card at 100k. We owned a workspace and we sealed two months, two projects monthly for for four months, right? And then the goals we didn't achieve, but we set goals at, at the last quarter. The goals we didn't achieve, but we didn't make at least a million in revenue. Uh, we made sales of one million, but we didn't make revenue of one million. I hope you guys went down this business talk. Uh, we didn't, that was a particular festival that was supposed to like manage, but we missed the deal. We didn't manage at least four events. We didn't see the projects per week, and we didn't have consistent in our stream. So it was like basic stuff. Uh, these are our brand statements, you know, random, this is random English, by the way, because it's sort of like really, really tr transferred, but we, we remade it eventually. Um, so our strategy map, this is like our 2019 goal, um, to, to make times turn what we made last year, uh, to increase our total number of clients to 50, uh, productivity metrics at 100%, uh, if you have 40% products, Designs products, web, 20 percent web design and 40 percent event management. Uh, we wanted for every 10 projects, we wanted a, a nine, we wanted a nine out of 12. Yeah, nine out of 12. Nine of them should be wow, two of them should be good. And at best, at best, you should have only one worst project. Uh, brand dominance or awareness should increase by times three. Uh, to the number of events that we should manage is 10, rate of event failure should be 10%, rate of event success should be 90%. Um, this was like a strategy map. Um, so the strategy map was like from top to bottom, really. So saying that, okay, our financial perspective is to increase profit margin and revenue. To do that, how, how should our customers look like? They should be ambitious and innovative. They should match price for value and they should have, we should give them great customer experience. How should the team respond to this customer perspective? That's what the internal perspective means. And it's a uh, brand dominance. It means that every single person should be a brand, strong brand on their, on their own, excellent and brand experience. You see, that part of internal perspective was one of the reasons why I became much more vocal in 2019 as a personal brand, right? And then learning and growth, how do you produce the, 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 the brand to actually hit these goals? And that's where team sync with the values, improving the skill set and improving innovation. And so for each of these uh, major internal perspectives, uh, we started saying get bigger clients, get clients that actually thrive, increase online fan base and partnering with other brands. And trust me, we hit everything. Excellence, create consistent world-class work, excessive research always, goal-oriented solution, blah, blah, blah. And what we did here was like, it kind of increased our, uh, we increased our, we increased our revenue like by times four within the first eight months, right? We, had, we hit our entire, last, the last year's revenue, we hit it in two months in the new year. So sort of like a really big deal for us, really. Um, our target was, was to do all of this. Uh, initiatives for brand dominance, we needed to increase visibility online. We needed to increase proper brand representation, increase SEO, and more corporate attendance, right? And this was like, we really, we began to do all of these things like straight up, um, intensive, right? Uh, and we did like really, really more of this. So like the entire year, really. Uh, actions. So you guys, you guys saw that they were like there was target, there was initiatives for what to do, and there were the things we actually did. For brand dominance, we needed to with one NGO per quarter. No free jobs at most. All costs should be paid. No job should go below our risk card minimum. Consistent social media engagement. Excellence. Intense material experience will not be accepted. Studio opens ten to five. Remote networks in our career should show up at the studio at least ten hours a week. Blah 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 for internal stuff. And then marketing strategy, this was just like, man, it's crazy. We just discussed how we we're going to reach out to clients, social media strategy, uh, talking about our finances, how much we wanted to spend, the budget for what we wanted to spend for, and the uh, company structure, having who is going to take what role, what it's going to do, and the entire team, who we needed, and then ended really. And that was like the way we sort of planned the entire year from the beginning of the year. And, we had like this thing we are trying to go on for. So you can also have something like this kind of document for your positioning statement. I don't know if you mostly have something similar, but- Yeah, 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 exactly. We had, so, we uh, had uh, you know, 
everything like in place, uh, even if a, 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 an investor was going to come by, like we we're fucking ready for them. Um, so yeah, most of the program. Um, let me get it. Um, it's still loading. It's my it's my ad drive. So um... okay, so you can make me the okay. Let me reclaim the host. Right. Okay. Um, so let me let me do that now. Can you guys see my screen now, All right? Yeah, we can. Okay, so I have users um, at the time, uh, clients, where are my clients? Okay, documents, then clients. So then I think I consider myself as a client, so it is very important. I took it that serious. So that's first lesson that you should learn. Try as much as possible to make sure that you take yourself that serious. You understand? Because this is not um, this is not a joke. Your business is not a joke, so don't take it with levity at all. So I have a other page, right? So I'm going to open this document. So let me see. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was 2018. I think so. So this. Look at. Uh, first of all, I don't have any. I don't really have anybody in my team. It was just me. But one of the stories I tell in my last class, that's the um, acts of design entrepreneurship. One of the stories I tell was, you know, as much as we want to hear how I started, right? The thing is, everything was documented. You understand? If, where I am going to in life, everything, I've written them down. Those are the goals, those are the objectives, like I said. So one thing is, uh, like I used to tell people, there's, there's a difference between destination and uh, journey. And then inside your journey, God has given us assignments. So your assignment is you have other things to do, but you yourself are the one that will be the architecture of your life. You can decide where you are going to for you. If this is not spiritual, it's not, it doesn't have to be spiritual, you understand? So, um, so I have this for me. So look at, I said the product is Ilta, you can see. So I defined where Iwata came from. The greater tree that carries the blood from the heart to all part of the body. Uh, the main truck of the blah, blah, blah. The liveliest part of something. So I had a meaning to my logo then, or the name of the brand, you can see. So another thing that I like to beg people is that if you want to run a brand, don't use your nickname to start. That's number one red flag. Don't start with your, just find a, just find a story to tell, you understand? Then you can find a brand name around it. The next thing is the overview. So look at Elta started as a design community, like an intern platform, a um, circle of designers that is trained to promote clients' brand, blah, blah, blah. So initially, I started like it's a training hub, basically. But at the end of the day, you can see that all these things are very all like it. they don't stay, they are not fixed. You understand? You rule as probably the economy <laughs> directs you sometimes. You have to be as flexible as possible. It was started as a, a design community platform. But at the end of the day, there wasn't really cash in, in that place. Although I might go back to it now, and I have design yarn, you get. So I have motive, I have, you know, I still have that um, dream, but then it is not Ilta anymore. Again, so I have the, the problem. Problem is that I need people to. There's nowhere to learn conveniently. Um, the youth unemployment and the costly skilled market, and then bad branding. Then I offer to offer a solution. So look at just write down the topics, right? That I'm um, the headlines. 
the overview of your company or your dream or whatever you're trying to do, then the problem that you want to solve, the solution, then the solution you want to provide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was thinking that you could probably after this year, yeah. I can email to the guys out there that you could probably like create a deadline document that you can send to them. I don't know if I can share this one to them or actually. Uh, I don't know if I can no, share send, this. No send this one. Like, a guideline. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But you, they can quickly write, just write this type of paper, just very, very fast. Then you can write the features that you want, probably the things you want to be providing as services. Okay, you can see printing and training as everything that you see here is what I do now. I do branding, I do web design, development, design, um, UI, UX, research, consultation. You can see this is years ago. Okay. So all these things are like maps, but they, we are going to help you to position yourself. Okay, so you know your target. Then you have your market, right? Uh, then you can talk about your market, talk about the opportunity overview, you can talk about the market size, uh, you do your research, your research starts here, Nigeria or global or regional, okay? Then you talk about your competition, right? Your competition, then you can see, I had my primary competition, Predator, Kanka, First Canvas, New Yorks. Then you talk about your competitive, your own competitive advantage, right? I think comfort, all these things was like, okay, I was asking questions. People that are working in First Canvas or Predator, you guys do research, you guys do consultation, whether if they are giving me the right data or not, I just needed something. You understand? So then we talk about how to make money. You can see everywhere. All this, that's one thing I beg designers, right? There are so many niches that you can still put your head into. Not just design, you can be a consultant, you can teach, you can do subscription service, you can do branding, you can you can do anything, right? You can sell courses. Then you have your target. My target was basically everybody, you understand? And I talk about the funding, the money I might need, what I would, everything that is there has been sold, as you can see. Everything I have my space, workers, equipment, the marketing, run ads, the finance. Okay, that's the money. This finance I generated it myself at the end of the day. Okay, so it was self funded. Then you can see normally all this was the cost of what I will use. But at the end of the day, it didn't really come because I did not see investor. I have to be the investor. You understand? So you do more and more. And before you know it, we talk about attraction. Now, all this traction has been achieved. We get our subscribers my first year. Now I have more than 30 uh, subscribers. Then third year, I don't know if I have, I've probably passed all this. My client volume has increased. You can see project top tutorship membership. You can see I have more than 1,000 um, subscribers to design. And I've passed all this. My online course sales have passed at least the first and second year. I think I have 70 students that have bought the course from me. Okay, then have other sales and all. So you can see that everything that is here was projected. You understand? It is very, very good to know how to map yourself or map your life generally, map your business so that you know how to go about it. Then you have your portfolio already so that you can uh, know how to present yourself or it can speak for you. Then look at the MVP. I think I was working on a website at that point in time. This was, this is like my first work. This is my first UI UX. That's how funny it is. My first UI UX was my own website. I was in, I didn't give any votes. And nobody, nobody reviewed this for me. I just went to and upload it like that. I paid one guy to do it for me. And when I saw that the website was ugly at the end of the day, I did it again, I did it again, I did it again. Before you know it, I had what I have now. You understand? That's why I'm always proud of what I put out. Nobody can come and bully me out of the work I put because it's my own work, here you get. So look at the team I had, I just had three guys there, just me and these two uh, people. They are not even working with me currently, you understand? At the end of the day, I was the one running all these things myself, okay? So this is you being prepared for everything that wants to come. I still tweeted two things today. I said, prepare yourself. There are so many things that are coming next year. Eh? See, eh? you see this COVID-19? Hello, can you hear me? So you see this COVID-19 bar, eh, it's going to drop a lot of ideas to people. Just position yourself, position yourself for real. Why are you asking for my phone? You want to go use my phone? 
I don't understand. <laughs> so position yourself for you, like do a lot of marketing, do start now, start now. It's very important that you start now, honestly. So um, I just want to show you how a P tech, I think Praise has also shown you guys how it looks like. So uh, that is how, that's just what I want to show you guys. So um, tomorrow we will probably go into uh, a live critic. I have so many emails here. So I have a uh, EME, Lua to be, um, which other people they have. I have so many people here. Yeah, should we find one or time has gone or something? Yeah, yeah, let's do tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Okay. Tomorrow. So I have. I have this guy. I think, I think that we can do tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. Okay, okay. So guys, it's fine. Um, if you send this way you work, right? I think I think if you send your if you send your portfolio to, to Moski's website, to Moski's email, um please Thank you. 